Um, basically, historically, pilots and for some extent flight, flight attendants are pretty well paid people. Um, and as overhead increased because of increasing fuel cost amongst other things, they had to cut down on labor costs, which was understandable at that point. But since then, um, they've continued to look to unions to renegotiate contracts, uh, usually in, in points of bankruptcy, to get the, the payment even lower for their work groups. Um, obviously, looking at the numbers, um, if you're paid $20,000 a year to fly a jet full of people around after spending $100,000 to $200,000 on a degree in training, it's an underpaid position. And for the most part, they don't really add, they haven't asked for concessions, large concessions at regional airlines in a while, but majors, um, as soon as they go into bankruptcy, like American Airlines is right now, they're asking for concessions on, on contracts and payment. So. One overhead that the airlines feel that they can control, mostly because the people doing the job have such a love for it, um, at first anyway, they feel that they could renegotiate the contracts and they'll be willing to take pretty much nothing to fly these airplanes. And unfortunately for most first officers, this, this is the case. And the cycle continues when you have a 10-year captain that you're asking to make concessions. And maybe he wants to leave, but at that point, let's say he's 45, he has no real options because his training was flying and that's the only thing he knows how to do. He doesn't have any other skill set. He can't go be a carpenter um, or, or get any other decent paying job because all he knows how to do is fly airplanes. So at that point, you're kind of trapped. This practice is probably gonna continue until some sort of major change occurs or another fuel is found that, that these airplanes can be powered off of, but that's, Still going to take years to come into effect because they have all these airplanes that they own that run on fossil fuels now. So um, the, I don't think it's going to stop. I think it's going to continue. Uh, it might get slightly better, but um, airline management is always trying to cut costs, and it's a pretty easy place to do it for some reason. So the, the golden days were kind of at the end of World War II um, all the way up until around the 1970s. Um, being an airline pilot was a pretty good place to be. It was a well-paid position. It was respectable. Um, you were looked at kind of a, as a, a very smart individual, mm, similar to like doctors and lawyers are looked like these days. Um, and the lifestyle was great. You were well-paid. You had tons of benefits. You could travel for free. You could bring your family. There was no constraints on who you could bring to travel. Um, like I said, the pay was, was pretty good, and in addition, you got the respect of the general population. When they saw a pilot walking around in the uniform, it was something they looked at with respect. Um, and since then, it's, it's come into uh, being a glorified bus driver that nobody really looks at with any, any sort of respect, and the pay's miserable, and the lifestyle has went from one of traveling to Europe and spending five days there and coming back and traveling the world to uh, flying to Raleigh, Durham or somewhere in the south or west, some little airport and getting paid like crap and it's uh, sort of a mundane lifestyle these days. For the most part, the guys flying the, the Transcon flights and the, the transoceanic flights, they're still pretty well paid. I mean, it's a six-figure job for sure, uh, first officers and captains included um, after you've been there for about two years doing that. Uh, but the lifestyle is not the same. You literally fly over the pond, you land, you sleep for 24 hours, you get back in the cockpit and you fly home. Um, sometimes you could bring a spouse or family uh, if they have travel benefits, one of your very limited travel benefits that you get, um, and you could spend time there, but for the most part you're just going to recuperate, sleep, get back on the airplane and fly at home. Um, that being said, as far as lifestyle for airline pilots go, it's, it's one of the better ones. I mean, you usually do maybe two, possibly three trips a month if you're senior. Um, so you, you go to Europe, you hang out there for a little bit, you come back, and then you get a decent block of days off normally. Uh, so it, it's, it's one of the better positions to be in in the airlines today.